You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The people are taught a way that is not God's way. Our prophet teaches us God's way, and I thank God for that. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's, it's good to be under somebody who's strong and can teach God's word. Hallelujah. It's good to be under somebody who can understand the word of God. Hallelujah. I wouldn't want to be a...
eyes on the space, and I know He watches me. I sing, I sing, I sing because. And I sing, I sing, I sing because I am free. His eyes are on the sparrow, and I And I sing, I sing, I sing because I am free. His eyes are on the sparrow, and I First, I give all praise, honor, and glory to Jesus Christ, who is my life. All honor to Prophet Walker in his absence. Let Lady Mother Walker in her absence, amen. We still having a great time. We still lifting the Lord up, amen. Let's get a band in hand. Pop his band in hand, amen. Again, thank God for all the testimonies that went up to the glory of God. Now we're going to call up Rosati Elder Willis tonight to share a word of God. Receive him with a heart, amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Give honor to my Lord Jesus Christ. All honor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is my life. Hallelujah. Double listen to honor to our anti apostle, prophet, prophet, and prophet, and lady, right? Glory to God. Honor, honor is due. Hallelujah. In this great sanctuary. Hallelujah. I said, praise the Lord. Thanks, God. Hallelujah. God is so good and so great to be praised. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I, I just want to leave a small message with you tonight. And I want to talk about the individual choice that we make in life. God gave everybody a choice to make. Uh, I believe when he made Adam and Eve in the garden and, and uh, told them to be fruitful and multiply and, and, and gave them all the commandments they needed to know to sustain life. Hallelujah. He created a tree in the midst of that garden, didn't he? Hallelujah. And gave them a choice to make. Hallelujah. Not to touch that tree or to touch that tree, but it was their choice to make. Glory to God. God gives everybody a choice in life. Uh, whether you be the sodomite down the street or the lesbian, uh, part of the lesbian coalition, but God gave you a choice. Hallelujah. I uh, recall when I was younger, and I've shared this in times past, watching my cousin grow up and he was every, every bit of boy. I mean, he rode motorcycles and done wrestled and everything else. But he made a wrong choice in life. And I saw him go from that young man to a... Well, let's just, let's just say it this way. Just a sissy. Hallelujah. Amen. But he made a choice. Hallelujah. It was his choice to make. I didn't make it for him. God didn't make it for him. He made it on his own. Hallelujah. And God always tells us to make a choice. And would have us to make the right choice. Glory to God. I want to start out in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. And uh, I want to, uh, let's go start off with verse 15. I see you said, he says, See, I said this, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. God said it before everybody. Hallelujah. And in an individual choice that we make, God said it. Hallelujah. He said it before you to make. 
But he goes on to say, uh, in verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, therefore choose life. Hallelujah. That both you and your seed may live. Glory to God. God always wanted us to choose life. Never wanted us to choose death. Hallelujah. I see this uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton come out on the news and and now she's, uh, I watched the video the other day, as a matter of fact, her uh, accepting that sodomite movement and, and backing that sodomite movement. Right. And uh, she's only doing this to get elected in, 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 in 2016. And if God tarries, she probably will. Hallelujah. But she's only saying these things because of a poor choice she made. And she's part of the, I guess she goes to the Methodist church from what I could understand in her background. I tried to call her pastor, as a matter of fact. I couldn't get an answer, glory to God. But I tried to call the church she goes to to find out why in the world they're teaching what they're teaching, glory to God. Amen. But I I saw this interview and, I, and I, I see these things that people do. And they're just poor decisions, poor choices. But why are they poor choices? Because the people are taught wrong, hallelujah. The people are taught a way that is not God's way. Amen. Our prophet teaches us God's way, and I thank God for that. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's, it's good to be under somebody who's strong and can teach God's word. Hallelujah. It's good to be under somebody who can understand the word of God. Hallelujah. I wouldn't want to be under anybody that didn't understand the word of God. I wouldn't want to be in a situation, and I have been in that situation before, where I didn't understand the word, and the person that was trying to teach me didn't understand the word. Glory to God. But I praise God I got out of it, because one night I got down on my hands and knees and said, Lord, I, I just don't know you. Hallelujah. But if you show me who you are, if you show me uh, what to do, I'll follow it. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. So I'll praise God for that. Hallelujah. And God sent me to the prophet. Glory to God. God sent me to the one that knows that he knows this entire book. You know, I, I've, I've called our prophet many times. Even in West Virginia when we hit the church up there, and I'd ask him a question. And he didn't have to. Well, sometimes he did. But he didn't have to, but he didn't have to get off the phone and say, I'll pray about it, or I, no, he'd go right to the scripture and say, well, here's the answer. Hallelujah. And he said, if you just read the word of God, he said, every answer, every question that you have in life is answered in that word. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Every one of them. Hallelujah. The prophet taught me that early, glory to God. And he also taught me that there's an individual choice that we must make in life. Amen. And that individual choice is to serve God or to serve him not. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember one time, I was so angry, I called prophet. I said, and, and I've told y'all this before. I was going to cross the New River Gorge Bridge. And I don't know how many of you, when you visited West Virginia and visited the church up there, ever would have crossed that bridge. But you're about seven, 800 feet in the air, and it's about a mile long. So once you're on it, you're on it. <laughs> you got to get across it. You're not going to just stop and, you know, you're not going to do that. You're way up in the air, and, and there's not much you're going to do about it until you get across. But I'm listening to this station one time, and it come out of... Uh, Huntington, West Virginia. I'm listening to this pastor, and he's and he's preaching a, a, a message, and I, and it was on a Sunday, and I said, I wonder what the other preachers are teaching right now. Hallelujah. We know we're preaching the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. We know the choice we've made in life is to preach the truth. We know that the, the choices we make, good or evil, hallelujah, determines our outcome. Glory to God. So we fear God in that respect. But I'm listening to this, and I'm listening to this podcast, and he tells these people, and I know you've heard me say it before, but he said, if you, if you come into the church a dirty old rag, you can stay a filthy old rag if you want to. God accepted you as that filthy old rag, and he still accepts you as that old rag. And, you know, I, I tried to stop my car in the middle of this bridge, and, and, and if I hadn't stopped it, I'd probably jerk that radio out and threw it over that bridge. Hallelujah. I was so angry, and I called prophets, and I said, why do people teach these things? He said, because of the choices they make. Hallelujah. They don't know no better because of the choices they made in life. They chose not to follow God. They chose not to follow this word. Hallelujah. But the word of God says, that it, says it, 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 it depends on uh, your outcome in life. Hallelujah. Whether you serve him or not. Hallelujah. The word of God teaches us how to live. teaches us how to treat one another. It teaches us everything we need to know. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything we need to know. Glory to God. But it teaches us about the choices we make. It teaches us about the wrong and right choices we make. It teaches us how to live right before God, upright before God. I'm not talking about, this. nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't think anybody in here is perfect. But we live the best we can according to this word. Hallelujah. Because the word of God teaches us how to live upright. Hallelujah. It teaches us how to, how to, how to serve God and how to fear Him and how to reverence Him. Hallelujah. How to, how to lift Him up, Lord to God. Hallelujah. It teaches us all those things. We learn it from the word of God. 
Hallelujah. But I remember that teaching on grace, how he butchered it. And, and I was so upset, and I called Prophet. I said, Prophet, why do people teach these things? He said, people were ignorant. God didn't send them. Hallelujah. God didn't send none of those people. Glory to God. And, you know, and it amazes me when you read the Word of God through and through, and you line these preachers up. I, I, well, I, you know, I, I started not to call them preachers because God didn't send them nowhere. Hallelujah. God didn't send them out to preach. But Jeremiah dealt with the same thing. He said, he said, I have not spoken to these prophets, yet they ran. God did not speak to a preacher to tell you that just because you live in grace or just because you're under the dispensation of grace, you can live any old way you want to live. Hallelujah. God didn't tell a preacher to tell you that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not sent to these prophets, yet they ran. Uh, they got in the pulpit and they started preaching this and started preaching that, started lifting themselves up, started... Listen, God didn't, God didn't send them, hallelujah. He said, yet they ran. He said, I've not spoken to, them, they, spoken to them, but yet they prophesied. God didn't tell them what to say. But yet they'll, they'll tell you each and every day how uh, the grace of God is, uh, is applied in your life and you can just live any old way you want to. Uh, that's not God's word, hallelujah. God didn't tell you that, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to prove it in Romans in just a second, hallelujah. But he says, if, I, if they had stood in my counsel... Those are the ones that are up in the pulpits today. These, these T.D. Jakes and these Joyce Myers and Kenneth Copelands and, and that blue-eyed devil and all, all the other ones that are standing up there Amen. saying and the Lord said this and the Lord said that and, and this and that. He said, if they stood in my counsel, if they sat under somebody like our great prophet, hallelujah, yes. if they'd understood my word, in other words, if they stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then, you see, they should have turned from their evil way and from their evil doings. Hallelujah. There's a word that is spoke today that will turn people from their evil doings. But praise God, the pastors don't want to preach it. Hallelujah. The pastors want to take grace out of context. They want to take, you know, they want to say, well, you, you can do what you want to do. And that's, a, that's essentially what this, this pastor was preaching at one time. I was listening to him. Do what you want to do. God is still there. But God didn't say that. Hallelujah. Amen. God gave you a set of instructions. Hallelujah. And put it in book form. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you got it here today. It's our map to heaven. Hallelujah. But I want to go into Romans, the sixth chapter. Hallelujah. And I want to just get into the word for just a moment. If you just uh, pray with me just a moment. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abound? He said, God forbid. Hallelujah. I can't continue in sin once I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I can't continue in sin once I give my life over to God. If I give my life over to God, then it means there has to be a change. But the change has to come within. The change is the choice that I make to serve God. Hallelujah. The individual choice. Glory to God. He says, shall we continue in sin the grace of God? He said, God forbid. Hallelujah. How shall we that are dead to sin, in other words, how shall we that are baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah, how are we that are dead to sin, live any longer therein, hallelujah. How can you say that you're a follower of Christ, how can you claim that you're a Christian, but turn around and say you can live any old way you want to live, hallelujah. The, the apostle said, God forbid, hallelujah. But he's the one that spoke on grace. But yet, a pastor won't read out of Romans, the 6th and 7th and 8th chapters for some reason. Although talk about grace and how grace is, it, it, it will save you and how you can just live any old way you want to, to because of grace. and Well, praise God. Hallelujah. I can't find that anywhere in the Word of God. But I want to continue on just for those at YouTube that may be believing a false lie. Hallelujah. He says, uh, he says, Know you not that the many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Hallelujah. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptizing, baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should all walk, all, also walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. There's a change that we must make in our lives. There's an individual change. a choice we must make. Glory to God. To walk in the newness of life. It's, it's your choice. It's not my choice. It's your choice. Hallelujah. But what are you going to do when you read the Word of God? Are you going to apply it in your life? Or are you going to ignore it? Glory to God. I choose to apply it in my life. Hallelujah. I choose to listen to what thus saith the Lord in my life. Glory to God. And in my finite way of thinking or maybe my way of remembering, I try to read the best I can and remember the best I can and apply it the best way I can. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be perfect when I do it. Glory to God. But I'm trying all I know how. And that's what God looks for. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. He's not looking for, uh, not, you know, be, he said he'll make us perfect. The perfect means complete, hallelujah, yeah. complete in Christ Jesus. That's why Paul said he died daily, glory to God, hallelujah. It's a, it's a, it's a renewing process, but it's a daily process, hallelujah. That's why I, I can't uh, agree with this message of once saved, always saved, hallelujah. It, it, if, if you can live any old way that you want to live, what are you saved from, hallelujah? Yeah. What are you saved from, glory to God? I, I can't answer that. Are you saved from the boogeyman? I don't know. Hallelujah. What are you saved from? You're supposed to be saved from that old man. Hallelujah. That old life that you used to live. Glory to God. But that old man is, is dead. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you're baptized in Jesus' name, that old man is dead. That old, those old ways are gone. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Choose life and death. Hallelujah. God said choose life, didn't he? Hallelujah. But Paul told us how we could live this life. And he gave an example in the seventh chapter. He said, you know, I, I try so hard, and I'm going to paraphrase. He said, but this old body can't do what I want it to do. Hallelujah. I struggle each and every day, and, and it seems like I do no good. Hallelujah. And this old flesh can do no good. Hallelujah. But, you know, the Baptists have no trouble quoting that. They have no trouble going into Romans, the seventh chapter, but they won't go back into the sixth and the eighth chapter, glory to God, to connect them. Hallelujah. But when you read the word of God, and I'm going to go over here, and he says, For that which I, uh, I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do I, uh, do I not. But what I hate, that I do, <laughs> that, that do I. Hallelujah. That's hard to read, isn't it? But <laughs> and he goes on to say, But then if, then, then I do that which I would not, I consent to the law that, uh, that, that is good. Hallelujah. In other words, I can't do, this flesh can do no good before God. And he's trying, and he's trying, and he's trying, and he's struggling. But Paul is talking about a man before conversion. Hallelujah. He's talking about a, a past life, glory to God, because he just said in the previous uh, 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 chapter, he said, he said, uh, he said, oh, are we going to live in sin anymore now that we are a saved people, basically? He said, God forbid, hallelujah. You can't live in sin. You can't just take grace out of its context, glory to God, hallelujah. So what he's saying here is, he said, I'm trying all these things in the natural, and I could not do it, hallelujah. I could not live right, but he said, there's a way to do it, glory to God. Amen. And he goes on in the eighth chapter, and he explains that way, Hallelujah. He says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk out not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's the Spirit man that walks after Christ. Glory to God. It's not the natural man. If you allow the Spirit man to take over, glory to God, hallelujah. If you allow the Spirit man to take over, then the, then the carnal man follows, like, glory to God. You're not going to be uh, the drunkard that you used to be, hallelujah. You're not going to smoke the cigarettes that you used to smoke. You're not going to tell the same old dirty jokes that you used to tell. You're not going uh, to live the same lifestyle that you used to live, glory to God. But you're going to be led by the Spirit, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. But he goes on to say, for the law of the Spirit... Uh, excuse, excuse me, it says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I like what he says in here. He said, You got to live by that Spirit. Hallelujah. You got to live by the Spirit. Glory to God. And verse 9, I think, gives clear, clear understanding to it. He said, You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Mm. See, when you're saved, you're not in the flesh anymore, but you're in the Spirit. And all these people who are preaching grace out of context. You got to you got to read the word of God in its proper context. You got to learn how to how to how to be under a prophet first of all. Glory to God. But you got to learn how to read the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Line upon line, precept upon precept. You got to put it all together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Who's not in the flesh? Those who are saved. Those who are walking after the Spirit, glory to God. The, those who are put on the new man, which after Christ Jesus is, is, is created in, in, in godliness and true holiness. Those who are put on the new man. Those who have made a choice in life to live upright and holy before God. Yeah. That's who he's talking about, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Those, those, those people are not in the flesh anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. He says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. That's you. You're not in the flesh, but you're in the Spirit, glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. I praise God for that. But if so be in the Spirit of God dwelling in you, if no man had the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Hallelujah. Amen. If we don't have the Spirit of Christ in our life, then how can God teach you? Hallelujah. Yeah. If you don't have the Spirit of God in your life, how can you, how can you live and, and dwell in this world, glory to God, with all the evil that's going on? And you see it all around you. As I opened up, you see this, uh, this Sodomite movement. Uh, growing stronger and stronger and stronger to where it seemed like it's surrounding the church, glory to God. And if you didn't know any better, you'd think it was right, hallelujah. And you see all these pastors, 
agreeing with this thought of my movement. But they're not led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. They're not led by the Spirit of Christ. They don't have the Holy Ghost within. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Word of God says, Some shall depart from the faith. I think First Timothy 4, chapter, verse 1 says, Some shall depart from the faith, giving uh, uh, heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Glory to God. Some shall do that. Hallelujah. But I praise God we're not going to do that in true life. Glory to God. I praise God for our wonderful prophet. Glory to God. I praise God. Hallelujah. That we, have, we follow a man who can stand up for the Word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That understands a godly life. That understands the Word of God. That understands that sometimes, Amen. you know, <laughs> the church is being attacked so strong now. Yeah. But I called our prophet one day. I said, Prophet, you know, why is that? Why, why does it seem like we're the only ones who are, who are right and the rest of the world seem like they're wrong? He said, well, Elder, he said, they don't believe the word. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't believe. Amen. Glory to God. I said, well, Prophet, that, that, that's... that's uh, you know, you're right. They don't believe, glory to God. And you know, they've made a choice in life, whether to believe or not to believe. Everybody's given that choice. I don't care who you are. You can be the president of the United States. Uh, you can be sitting here. All of y'all were given a choice. I was given a choice. But when the Word of God came, hallelujah, the Word of God came, it changed me, hallelujah. It changed the individual. I didn't want to be the old man anymore, hallelujah. I didn't want to be the old the old uh, 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 Willis anymore, hallelujah. I didn't want to be that old man, glory to God. I didn't want to be him. Why did I not want to be him? Because he didn't line up with the Word of God. Hallelujah. And I wanted to line up so bad. Hallelujah. And it took me so long. And it seemed like I took these baby steps and baby steps and baby steps. But I kept on learning the Word of God. I kept on uh, listening to the prophet. Hallelujah. And kept on believing in the Word, Lord of God. I kept on meditating on the Scripture. Hallelujah. That I may not stumble before God, Lord of God. Hallelujah. That I could not be in the flesh any longer. That I could live. You know, there's a choice that we make. And it's life and death. But if we don't live in the Spirit, we chose death. Amen. People don't realize that. Hallelujah. Amen. If they don't live in the Spirit, they've chosen death. Yes. You know, and, and hell's going to last just as long as God shall live. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes, it will. Amen. Glory to God. But I'm so glad we chose life today. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad about that. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad that, you know, we can interpret the Word of God and truth. Glory to God. And as I said before, line up on line, precept on precept, glory to God. And I thank God, you know, for a wonderful leader that's taught us that, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. I thank God, hallelujah. The Word of God says, be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. I thank God for His Spirit. I thank God for His peace, hallelujah. His happiness and His joy that abounds in our life, glory to God. I thank God for that. You know, it, it's comforting to know. It, you know, and before I came into true life, and I used to think about this often. I don't know about you all, but I used to think about this often. So what would it be like if I, if I didn't wake up this morning? What, where would I open my eyes? I always had that conviction. I don't know about you, but I did. I had that conviction early in life. I remember as a child, I always had that conviction. Where would I, where would I open my eyes if I died? And I always wanted to seek God. And I sought Him, I sought Him, I sought Him. But you know what? I realized that to be spirit-minded is life. Glory to God. And I realized that when I was baptized into his name, I, I come out of that old man, hallelujah. Yes. And I had life after that, glory yes. to God. Yes. I had and, and, and obtained eternal life. Even though I'm still living here, glory to God, the old man died, glory to God. But I raised up in the newness of life, hallelujah. Yes. I thank God for that, hallelujah. Yes. I thank God for his wonderful word tonight, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah, for just being a part of that, glory to God, hallelujah. And you know, God is so good in his word. He gave it to us forever and ever, hallelujah. Glory to God. I used to go to write, write a tablet note in the book for the time to come forever and ever. Hallelujah. And the Word of God is forever. And it's for every generation. Glory to God. Uh, Jesus said, Straight as gate, near the way that leadeth unto life. If you there be that find it, glory to God. You know, uh, it's a choice that we make that allow us to find that straight and narrow way. Uh, Jesus taught it many times. You read it through all, all throughout the Bible. You know, and the Bible is, is, is uh, about choices. You see choices that individuals make in it. Some good, some bad. Hallelujah. But it's all to teach us today how to make the right choices in our life. Glory to God. And, you know, and I see so many people in this world making bad choices and making, 
just making excuses for their lives. And, and, I, and I see uh, people on television who once stood up against homosexuality and, and, and sodomite and lesbian movement now are weakened, glory to God, and right. in a condition that, uh, really in a backslidden condition, hallelujah, that they can't get themselves out of, hallelujah. Yeah. And God talked about that in, I believe, Hebrews the 10th chapter. They're in a backslidden condition. And can't get themselves out of it. Why? Because they backed up on God. Hallelujah. Right. They backed up on the Word of God. Hallelujah. It would not. It would not stand up for God. Hallelujah. Weak knees. Weak knees. Milk toast preachers who would not stand up. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would not stand up for the simple word. It's 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 a simple word. Hallelujah. Anybody can understand it. Hallelujah. If they just humble their hearts. Glory to God. Anybody can understand it. Our, my prophet taught me that a long time ago. Amen. When I was reading the Word of God, I said I said prophet. I said, every time I read, I pray as hard as I can pray, hallelujah. And I start reading. I said, I start understanding the Word of God. He says, because you got an honest heart, hallelujah. He said, that's all God's looking for, hallelujah. It's simple to understand, but you got to have the heart to understand it, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's a choice that we all make. And I praise God that we've all made a wonderful choice tonight, hallelujah. I praise God, hallelujah, that when the Word of God came to us, we weren't, uh, well, we didn't have the mindset that we know everything and, you know, I, I've been accused of that before because when I was in the world, I thought I knew everything. Hallelujah. And um, decent education and thought I knew everything. But when, you know, when I was confronted with God, I realized I didn't know nothing. Hallelujah. I realized I didn't know a thing. I had to, know, I had to learn everything over again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I praise God for being a prophet that was able to teach me everything I needed to know to make it from this earthly kingdom into the heavenly kingdom. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I want to just leave that with you tonight. Glory to God. And just, uh, just leave you with a final thought. that The choices we make in life really reflect on where we're going to end up in, at the end of life's journey. Hallelujah. And I thank God that we've all made the choice to follow Christ tonight. Hallelujah. Pray my strength in the Lord. Glory to God. Pray Lord's hands. If you have a hand for that powerful word. Amen. Again, thank God for all that transpired on tonight, amen. And we spoke about individual choice, and I believe the Vanguard's guaranteeing he gave a powerful Sunday school lesson about the story of Caleb, how he had another spirit, and how we have that spirit today, the spirit of Caleb, because we refuse to bow down to the sodomite lesbian movement. Refused to bow down to the dominant personalities of one Barack Hussein Obama, to this wicked hip hop movement, uh, which I'm about to prove is all one and the same. Amen. And he spoke about the former Secretary of State Hillary Rodden Clinton. Amen. How she's now endorsing uh, same-sex marriage, and she went on to say, "Well, yeah, my my daughter just got married, but did you mention about your daughter having kids?" But see, she didn't go that far because she know two men and two women can make a baby. And also in that transcript, she stated that, well, you know, I know it's going to be some religious people, amen, yes, true life, amen, who don't agree. And um, let's get together and talk with respect and find a common ground. There is no common ground, amen. God said male and female, amen. He gave man a woman and said it is good. And he said go multiply and replenish the earth, amen. And two men cannot replenish the earth. So I say to Miss Clinton, how did you get here, amen? With all your degrees, with all your education, how did you get here, Mrs. Clinton, amen? Now, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I believe Elder Marshall gave a teaching uh, about this Illuminati and Jay-Z and all the hip-hop movement, amen, and still them the sodomite movement, and he mentioned about the Illuminati and how uh, the people are bound down to this movement through hip hop. And as you know, he's married to Beyonce. And she just came out with a song, uh, I guess off a new album. It's called Bow Down Female Dogs. Now watch this. Now watch. Jay Z is Ob Obama's favorite performer, Beyonce is Michelle Obama's favorite performer. Why would a president and a wife, first lady of the United States, be involved in this hip hop movement? Because it's all a, a rebellion, amen, against the divine order of God, amen. Now, they know that people curse, and hip hop 
Again, it's not about the music. The music is the, the vehicle, amen. The way they dress, the way they talk, the profaneness, the vulgarity, amen. And you bring your daughters up, the Bible says, tell your daughter, try them in the way that it should go, amen. And she's saying, bow down to all the females. This is a spiritual song. It got nothing to do with, she ain't, man, she ain't talking. This is spiritual. She know God say, I'm a jealous God, amen. You can't worship no other God but God, the Almighty, Jesus Christ, amen. They know what they're doing. They mocking God. Then God say every day, my name is continually blasphemed, amen. You want somebody to bow down to you? And you think a, a Michelle Obama going to stop going to see Beyonce? No. It's all one and the same. The lesbian movement. The, the sodomites, they're all in the hip-hop. It all ties in together with your beast and the spirit of the Antichrist, Barack Hussein Obama, amen. Who's hired more sodomites, lesbians, transgenders, amen. They're about to repeal, they re don't repeal, uh, don't, don't tell, Doma is next, amen. They're going to make it viable now for sodomites and lesbians to adopt children, Amen. So, again, wonder the spouses die, that child goes to them. It don't go back to the state. Amen. So you see all this hypocrisy, and they got nerds time they, they, they go to church. Do you see the mockery on the land today? Amen. And people, and, and uh, the people who wrote, um, who commented on the story, oh, well, I'm a Christian, and I, no, you're not a Christian. Listen to Beyonce. Amen. A Christian is one who follows Christ. Amen. Not saying I'm a Christian. How are you going to be a Christian and go against the values? And we're just brought out. Amen. About the spirit of Christ. Amen. Let, let's go there. Hold on quickly. Now we're going to prove this. Individual choice. Now you're making a choice to listen to that foolish music when it don't line up with righteousness of God. Amen. What's that? Romans 8. Yes. He brought us out. Let's start at verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not something to the law of God, neither can be. Now, God said, put away, amen, filthiness, filthy communication. God said, put that away. That's the law of God, amen. But you're in a carnal mind, so that law of God does not apply to you. Why? Because your mind is in enmity against God. You said it. It's not subject to the law of God. Amen. Neither D can be. Because you want to go out and get that CD by Beyonce. And one woman say, oh, I spent $20 on a ticket. Well, burn it up and cut it up. Amen. Don't complain about the money you spent. And then come and get baptized. Amen. And follow one prophet H. Walker. Amen. Now watch verse 8. It's getting deep. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now we know Hebrews said, amen. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right here, Paul saying, basically the same thing. So then they are in the flesh, cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he and she is none of his. So all the people out there making them choices to follow uh, this hip-hop movement through Obama and Jay-Z and his wicked wife, amen, who uh, still want to support same-sex marriage. Amen. Who wants to support? Uh, well, it's I, I support traditional marriage, but uh, you know what they do in their bedrooms, their own business. What two men do in their bedrooms, their own business. Amen. But you support marriage between a man and a woman. You don't care what they're doing in the bedroom, long as they don't call it marriage. Again, that is the mind of a person. Amen. That God or, or the God of this world, Satan, the Bible says, has blinded their minds. Amen. So again, you are not. And you are not in the spirit, amen. You are not a child of God. The Bible says, Hebrew, I know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Everyone who lines up with the sodomite movement, I don't care how uh, slick you try to be about it, you are not a Christian, amen. And you're headed to the lake of fire if you don't repent. So we're trying, amen. We're trying to come to you with the word so you can repent and recover your soul, amen, from the devil. But again, the Bible said this is rebellious people, amen, and they love to have a soul. But I thank God the Prophet Walker, thank God that we have made a choice to come out from the world and be separated, amen, and we're not touching the unclean thing. So again, thank God for the word of God tonight. Elder Willis, thank God for our great prophet, amen.
and church be encouraged, amen. People are mocking the word of God, amen. But no, we have a standard right here. We have a true prophet. We have a true soldier on the battlefield, amen. We're not fighting. Love Talk Radio.